ever speak about a person, you know, by Allah, numbers never scared him. Europe threw everything that they had at him, but they couldn't scare him. And the testimony to the greatness of this man is that every single person claimed him. Even his arch enemies claimed him. When the news of his bravery and compassion reached Europe, they couldn't believe that a non-white, non-Christian man could be so brave and so compassionate. And Salahuddin was born in the fort of Tikrit. And his mother mentioned that when I was pregnant with Salahuddin Rahmatullah Alayhi, I saw a dream that in my stomach, I have a sword from the swords of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And Salahuddin from a very early age, he became a hafid of the Quran. He was a Shafi in fiqh and he memorized Kitab al Tambi of the Shafi school of fiqh. And his greatest aspiration in life was to become a scholar. He loved the scholar. Throughout his life, the men that he respected the most were the ulama. And this is why Shaykh Abul Hassan Nadwi rahmatullah alayhi, he said Salahuddin was a Muslim. He was a Muhammadi. He was a Mu'min. The only language that he understood was the language of the Quran. The only language that he understood was the language of Islam and Iman. Salahuddin was still young. Then he had the honor of being tutored by a man regarding who Ibn Athir rahmatullah alayhi says, I have studied the lives of the Khulafa and I've studied the lives of all the kings. And since the Khulafa Rashid Dun and Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, the Muslims never had a man who was as upright and caring and compassion as Nuruddin Zinki rahmatullah alayhi. Meaning for 450 years, the Muslims never had a man like Nuruddin Zinki rahmatullah alayhi. And Salahuddin would say that Nuruddin is my master. He modeled himself on Nuruddin. And also Nuruddin realized the potential in Salahuddin. And this is why when in Damascus, crime became rife, he made Salahuddin at a very tender age in charge of the entire police of Damascus. And then Salahuddin worked on the people and he brought peace back to Damascus. And after a while, when Salahuddin grew up somewhat, the crusaders attacked Egypt. And what a deed the Caliph in Egypt did is that he cut the hair of his wife and he sent it to Nuruddin. And this meant that we can no longer look after our women, assist us. And Nuruddin Rahmatullah didn't want to assist them because see the Aladid and the Egyptians were Fatimites. The Fatimites were Shias and they were not only Shia, they were a very decadent nation. But Shirku, the uncle of Salahuddin convinced him. And Salahuddin Rahmatullah Alayhi says, that when my uncle came to me to take me to Egypt, I didn't want to go. One, because his aspirations was to become a scholar. But second, he mentions, you know, I thought I was going to die. As Allah says, you know, in the Quran, وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَوْ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ It is a possibility that you will dislike something, but there's good in it for you. And by Allah, Salahuddin going, there was good for the Ummah. And Shirku rid Egypt of the Crusaders. And shortly after this, a deed remained the Caliph, but Shirku became second in charge. After a while, Shirku passed away. And the ulama and the fuqaha, they chose Salahuddin Rahmatullah Alayhi in the place of Shirku. And therefore, Salahuddin Rahmatullah Alayhi became the second most powerful man in Egypt. He was only 32 at the time. And Salahuddin showed what a real leader should be. He removed all the taxes which were contrary to Sharia. He established Sunni madrasas. By the time Al Adid was passing away, Salahuddin made an announcement from now Egypt will be Sunni. The historians mention no two rams locked horns, meaning nobody disagreed because, see, the people loved Salahuddin. He won their heart. He was a true leader. He showed love and compassion to people. And that love and compassion was reciprocated. And Ibn Murra mentioned, he said, I swear by Allah, if Salahuddin had been given the entire dunya to spend in the path of Allah, it would have not been enough for him. His treasurers would never tell him how much they had in the treasury because he would spend it all. And the historians mentioned, that Salahuddin Rahmatullah Alayhi never in his life did he turn away a beggar. Never in his life, listen to this, never in his life did he ride a horse, but he had already promised to give it to somebody else. 
The palace that Adid left behind him, there was nothing like it in the world. It had 4,000 rooms, 12,000 occupants. And besides his direct family, all the occupants were women. And Salahuddin refused to move in it. It is the barakah of Salahuddin Rahmatullah Alayhi that today Egypt is Sunni. Egypt had been Shia for over 280 years. Al Azhar, the oldest Muslim university, had been Shia for over 200 years. And it was Salahuddin Rahmatullah Alayhi who brought him back into Sunniism. Now, after Nuruddin passed away, Syria just fragmented. All the princes were only interested in their little fiefdom. And they began to side with the crusaders to fight other princes. They were actually giving annual tributes to the crusaders. And the people of Syria were disgusted because they were used to a man like Nuruddin, a powerful, charismatic man. And the people of Syria, they turned to Salahuddin Rahmatullah Alayhi. And this was the time that Salahuddin started on his expeditions.